Hey, this is uh, Professor Nick Sensky. Uh, I'm going to give you a brief demo of a script uh, that I've been working with that lets you um, output animations directly from Grasshopper. So as you vary a parameter in your design, you will get an image. And then if you see the images uh, in sort of an animation, you will be able to see the impact of that parameter uh, on the light within your space. And uh, what I've got here is uh, this, this, this file that I made in Rhinoceros. It's a simple kind of canopy uh, over a wall and there's some light coming in and I can vary this parameter for the height um, of these pyramids. And I'm interested in what happens when I do that, what happens to the light uh, inside the space. And what the script allows me to do is it's gonna output a frame, uh, a maxwell image for each one of those steps. And then I'm gonna be able to go through and look at the impact of that. So you can see this is when they're all flat. And then, you know, each time I do this, this is this is one, you know, step higher, a little bit higher. It's gonna keep going. I can step through these like an animation, and I can see, in this case, you know, with this time of day for this set for this setting, uh, if these are very tall, the there's not as much glare as uh, when they are uh, flat. Okay, so I can understand that parameter a little bit better. And the advantage of this uh, script the the way of doing this is that uh, it doesn't require any additional tools that we don't have it's using rhinoceros max while well, the grasshopper uh, in a way that's relatively straightforward um, there are certainly other ways more automated ways of doing this uh, but this method is useful because again we can kind of get our heads around it uh, without without too much effort and it allows us to see um, the impact of the light bounces within the space. So not just the direct light, but the overall contribution to the light within the space um, without the need for radiance or some other tools that we haven't used. And um, it um, gives us kind of an intuitive way of looking at this. And we, we can decide that, okay, like at, at one of these points, I feel like the height is, is enough. It's gonna give me the light pattern, the distribution that I want. And then that's what I'm going to choose to uh, bake in my solution. So, um, that's the introduction. Uh, the next part I'm going to take you through actually how this works. The first thing you want to do is uh, have your model in Rhinoceros and uh, set up a camera for it that you're going to be using to create your renderings. And I'm not going to explain uh, how to do that. I'm, I'm going to assume you know how to set up a camera in Rhino. Uh, but the important thing that you want to do uh, is make sure that you get a view that's going to, that's going to give you the information you want and then save that uh, as a camera. In this case, what I've done is I've taken a left view, um, which is orthogonal usually, uh, usually like parallel and flat, and I created a copy of it. I made it a perspective projection, um, which gives me a little bit of depth. And I made the lens length fairly large, like lar larger than, uh, than it is usually. Um, and that gives me this kind of uh, sectional, kind of depth section view. Uh, that's what I did for this one. And then once you've got your camera set up properly, uh, you're going to want to go into Maxwell, uh, plug in Windows, and open up the Scene Manager. And uh, the Scene Manager is really uh, where all the settings uh, are that we're going to need to to like set up. And what I've done is I've set my folder. So if you go into uh, this Files tab, Output, you're going to want to set a folder, which is where all of your Maxwell files are going to go in the script. So make that a location that you have access to. Um, you're going to want to set the location and the time. So you're gonna go in and set it. In this case, I'm setting it up for Charlotte. Uh, set the day of the year uh, and the time of day that you're gonna to wanna to render, okay? So you're gonna be rendering a sequence of these, uh, but only at this time and place uh, and day of the year. Um, later on, I'll maybe talk about how to, how to, how to do that uh, with a script. But for now, you can, you can run a batch of these uh, just using these settings. Um, you're gonna to wanna to check out your sun system. In this case, I'm using a sky dome. It's pretty easy and I'm gonna make sure you use the sun so I get the direct light. You can uh, go through and use the physical sky uh, settings if you'd like and uh, things get a little bit more complicated there. Um, but I'm gonna use sky dome for now. And then lastly, uh, the camera settings. I just wanna talk about this briefly. So what I, if you guys have seen um, these files that I've made, they uh, actually show kind of a section cut through here. Um, and uh, that's interesting, right? How, how, do you, how do you do that? Because you, you could actually cut the model physically to expose that, but if you did, it would let light in and you don't want to do that. So how do you keep the model intact while making um, a section cut? 
Well, the way to do that is with a thing called Z-clip planes. And what the Z-clip is, is essentially you can use the camera and you can actually clip out some of the depth of the image and it's, it's going to essentially take an x-ray uh, from a certain Z-clip uh, Z clip distance uh, and then that's going to that's gonna allow you to uh, see things as a section. Okay, so the model's solid, but the camera sees it uh, from inside, sees it from a section. So what I did is I enabled Z-clip planes uh, for this camera and uh, if you go into Maxwell, animation control, I'm sorry, uh, Maxwell, rendering and export, uh, Maxwell Fire. Maxwell Fire is a little window that gives you a preview uh, render, and uh, that's going to interactively display just a kind of a quick render of what, what that thing outputs. If you, you, you can make your camera, and then you can set your Z-clip plane, uh, and if you adjust it, so you can see if I adjust it to zero, uh, it's going to be, or if I adjust it to 100, so you can actually see like interactively, seeing if I adjust the clip too far, it's going to clip right through my space. So um, you, can, you can play with the setting a little bit, and um, it's going to allow you to uh, interactively see the contributions of, of those things uh, to your rendering. Okay? So um, you can use Maxwell Fire also to help you with your camera placement. It's actually going to show you what your camera is going to look like. Okay? You can see that I can, I can actually clip my way past that as well. So uh, Maxwell Fire is useful for setting up your camera. I'm gonna undo all this stuff though, get back to my imagery. Okay, so I found that these settings work pretty well for me. Uh, this is Z clip of 100 and uh, this range, so I'm gonna keep that. Okay, so once you've got that set up, you've got your camera set up, you've got the clip set up if you're using it, uh, you've got a file location, a location. You're gonna go into Maxwell, animation control, begin animation. This is important to do because you're going to want the program to uh, create a sequence of files, and uh, this just sets that mode up. Uh, so say begin animation, it's gonna say beginning animation loop. And that's all you need uh, at this state. And now we're gonna be looking at the Grasshopper script um, itself. So in this next part, uh, we're gonna be looking at the Grasshopper script. So once you have your Rhino model set up, you have your Maxwell set up the way we just talked about, uh, you're gonna wanna look at your Grasshopper. And uh, it, before you do any of this, you would have your grasshopper script uh, that creates the geometry uh, all figured out and um, the uh, so the red stuff that's in this uh, view are the things that grasshopper is uh, actually making and uh, so if we vary if we vary the parameter right this is what's going to change these don't really exist in the model yet if we rendered it uh, now uh, you wouldn't see any of these grasshopper uh, pieces because they don't exist they exist in grasshopper uh, until they're until they're baked and then they go into the rhino model Okay, so these are kind of virtual or kind of ghost copies of something uh, that exists in Grasshopper. And what the script does is it takes this geometry, uh, looks at the parameter, uh, bakes it so that it's real geometry, and then renders it uh, in Maxwell. Then it goes back and changes the parameter, makes the geometry, bakes it, renders it, and it just does this in a loop okay, until it's done. Okay, so again, the part that I created, the part that I'm responsible for in this uh, is, is really the um, grasshopper model and the grasshopper geometry. But the script handles is just the automation of baking it and rendering it, okay? And the important thing in this script is the parameter that I'm varying, and that's what this, this slider is. And it's basically just the height of that pyramid point, okay? My script takes a surface, subdivides it, uh, and then creates um, a mesh pyramid. This is a Weaver Bird uh, plugin, um, and and then the height of that pyramid is is the parameter that I have. Um, so this is the part that I'm varying right now, like interactively. What I want to do is let the script uh, vary that. So I'm going to erase this piece, and um, then I'm going to basically this is the this is the setup. For the plugin, um, you have a time interval, which tells you how often it makes a rendering, uh, and then you have an interval which represents um, the interval that you want to vary it across. So I want, in this case, I'm interested in varying it from one to twenty. Okay, if I want to change that, I can go into set domain and I can change that setting. Okay, this interval down here, th this is actually like an integer 
uh, and this is the amount that I want to vary at each uh, frame, and so I want to vary it by one each frame. So it's going to do one, two, three, four, and so forth, all the way to 20. Okay. So again, I set my range up here inside the domain, one to 20. This is the unit that I want to vary, uh, and then I plug that into where my parameters. You can see that it just set that back. All right, now it's time to actually start producing uh, renderings. And uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, make sure that you reset the uh, buffer. If it, if you, especially if you've been making some previous renderings, you want to reset it. So you want to toggle it to true, and then toggle it back to false, and it's going to reset it. And you can verify that by verifying that the output parameter um, has been reset to the interval, which is, uh, in this case, it's going to be zero. Um, so um, then, uh, you know, the renderings are basically going to output to wherever you specified uh, in the Maxwell uh, C manager. Remember back to uh, where you specify that folder. And uh, when you're ready to go, you just double click on the timer and uh, every 200 milliseconds, it's going to spit out um, a Maxwell file with the parameter uh, changed. So let's go ahead and run that. And you can see the script is actually, you know, working. These are incrementing uh, one unit uh, every frame. Uh, the geometry is being baked. Uh, if you follow the, the viewer here, the mesh is being exported. Uh, a new Maxwell file is being saved. And in this case, it's going to make uh, 20 files. And uh, right now, the script uh, isn't too intelligent. Like it doesn't actually know uh, when to stop. So it just keeps growing. So when you're done, just just double click the interval to stop it. And uh, if you go into your directory. You go into, in this case, I said output. It makes a file uh, folder that's the same name as your uh, file name. And then within that is going to be um, a list of Maxwell files. Um, the numbering of the files is always going to start um, based on um, the last uh, file rendered. Unless you go back and you reset the animation control, you can say, you know, like begin animation. That's going to reset the, uh, man the animation loop. And that'll reset the numbering. Uh, I had rendered something before, so it started at five. But if you do that, that's actually going to uh, reset your numbering. Okay. So once you've got your uh, folders, uh, your files all saved in your folder, you're going to want to go ahead and open up uh, Maxwell Studio, and uh, that's what's actually going to finish off all the renderings. Um, these are basically the files that are ready to be rendered in Maxwell. Uh, so we're actually going to open up Maxwell and uh, finish them off. So for this last part here, we have all the Maxwell files that have been rendered um, out of Grasshopper. And we're going to go ahead and open up uh, Maxwell uh, Render. And uh, this is the separate program that actually renders uh, Maxwell things. And uh, what we're going to do is we are actually going to load a uh, script. And uh, this is one that I uh, have already modified. And what it's going to do is it's just going to render all of those files uh, in a batch. And this is going to save us from having to actually manually uh, do that ourselves. And uh, in my case, it's going to be this script that's called Maxwell Batch Render Script. And uh, if you go ahead and uh, go ahead and open up this script window here. What you want to do is you actually want to change the input folder uh, and the output folder names to whatever they are uh, on your machine. And uh, so, like, if I go in here, I can go in and uh, you know, right click and uh, get that path from this location here. Okay. So, copy. Paste. And I'm going to do the same thing here for the output folder. Uh, you could add another folder to it if you'd like. I'm just going to spit them out in the same folder. It's fine. Um, the other part of the file that um, I want to modify, um, you might modify the um, the output type. That's fine. Um, you can change the sampling level here. Set sampling level. You can change the resolution. So the sampling level is it's only you know Maxwell renders um, a certain number of sampling iterations, and then it, and then it decides to stop. Um, so in this case, I'm saying eight. Uh, that's the level that I uh, that I'd want to see. Um, for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to make it uh, three, which is very little. I might not see very much. And then I'm going to set the resolution. Eight hundred by six hundred is fine. Um, you could also set it by time instead of sampling level. If you would, you know, like uncomment this line and then change it. But I'm going to go ahead and comment that. Okay, 
Um, I think that's all that I need to do with this script. And then once you have that script modified, uh, you go ahead and hit play, run, and uh, it should start processing um, those in it. So this is what it's actually going to look like uh, when you when you run the script. Um, everything is going to uh, render. In this case, I'm only doing a couple of iterations just to show you. So it's it's very fast, but also very pixely, uh, and really not very good quality. And uh, it's just going to run through uh, all 20 uh, MXI files and you know quickly um, make those renderings and uh, spit them out in the directory. And then when we're done we can look at those files and uh, see what we've got. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's uh, the process from um, Rhinoceros file to um, Grasshopper and into MaxWap. I um, hope this was informative. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, thanks.